So, what is this thing called single session and one at a time counseling? Well, it is um, an intentional endeavor. The counselor, the therapist, and the client get together with the intention. They both know that they're that setting out on, on, the, on this um, short journey where the therapist seeks to help the client in one session, but knowing that more help is available. Um, there are times when single session therapy is what I call Ron Seal, which is, means it does exactly what it says on the tin. So for example, the demonstrations that I do and the demonstration that I will do this afternoon will be um, a one session therapy. I will only be speaking to this person once and once only. But um, the one at a time aspect, if you want to emphasize that, is that both parties set out with the intention of helping the client in one session, knowing that more help is available. Now, at the end of the session, um, rather than book a session straight away, another session straight away, which is probably um, much more common uh, in, in other ways of working, the client is engaged to, in, um, is encouraged to engage in a process of reflection of what they've learned, digesting what they've learned, taking some action, letting time pass before they make a decision whether they need another um, session. Um, one thing in my practice that I found um, out that when people come to a session, they, ha they haven't done much preparation for it. And when they leave the session, they, they tend to go out in the world without much reflection. So I think generally this is a good thing to encourage people to do, to prepare for the session beforehand, to reflect and digest on what they've learned, to take some action, and then to, to actually um, wait and decide before they make another appointment. So single session therapy or counselling um, is a mindset and a mode of service delivery rather than a specific therapeutic approach. So somebody who says, I'm a single session therapist, will be telling you about what mindset they hold under certain circumstances and the fact that they are involved in a mode of service delivery which offers, which offers a single session rather than an ongoing or a block as a matter of course. Um, it's not a specific counselling approach or a technique. And it's based on the idea that a brief encounter between two people can be therapeutic, okay? Um, I don't know if you've had the, uh, the experience of, of um, meeting somebody and speaking to them and finding what they had to say helpful. And, and never seeing them again, or even have the experience of actually meeting um, somebody and helping the other person in a brief period of time. My own experience was that uh, in 1968, 67, 68, um, I was listening to a radio interview with a man called Michael Benteen, who was one um, probably uh, most famous as a goon, or um, uh, had a TV program called The Potty Men. I don't know if you remember The Potty Men. Uh, those of you who could probably uh, guess that this was Eminem will probably think that we're all crazy because of a different time. Um, I have a stammer. You may be able to pick it up. But, uh, and at the time, it was a lot worse. And during that course of the radio interview, Michael Benteen was sharing his experience uh, that he had a stammer and that he said that what he found quite helpful was to adopt the attitude, if I stammer, I stammer too bad. Now, that struck me at the time. It was something that I then implemented and um, helped me quite a bit. And so 
I was helped by a very brief encounter, virtual encounter, because I never get to speak uh, uh, to meet him. Um, and it was about, uh, um, that portion was about a minute of an hour's interview. So human beings are organisms that can be helped quickly and can help other people quickly. Now, therapy length is expandable. Um, this is called Parkinson's Law of Psychotherapy. It has got a, a specific name, and it is that therapy expands and contracts to the extent to which you uh, assign particular time to it. So if you want to give people two years then, and they you know, embark on that, then they'll take the two years. Um, if you give them, uh, or, or if you offer them something shorter, they will tend to use the time that is available to them. I actually found this out as a university lecturer on my courses when at the beginning of my uh, course I'd hand out something, um, a course booklet which um, outlined the time. Um, in September, students knew that they had to hand in their work by the end of April. And so the end of April came and most people would hand it in about a quarter um, uh, uh, of an hour before the deadline and, and a few people would rush in, papers going all over the place and we were able to sort of help them to calm down and staple everything. And so they accused me of being unfair and that they needed more time. So then I gave them an extra month and guess what happened? <laughs> exactly the same. So um, if you give people um, a long period of time, they will still procrastinate at the end of it. So, what are the favorable conditions that exist for single session and one at a time therapy to thrive? First of all, it's best done within a context where help is provided quickly in response to help being sought. In other words, um, it's help provided um, within the context of need rather than in the context of availability. Most Times, if you want psychological help, particularly from a public or a charitable organization, you will start off being assessed. Um, and then you will have to uh, wait. So you have to wait for an assessment and then you'll have to wait for therapy. When single session therapy is um, offered within a walk-in context, you walk in to a therapy agency that provides this service, you fill out a brief form and you're seen about 30 minutes later for a session of therapy. There's no assessment, no triaging, um, just therapy. So this is help provided quickly in response to help being sought. Um, it's important that both therapist and client hold realistic expectations about this work. If both think that nothing can be done, then nothing will be done. Um, however, it's unlikely that in a single session, we're going to uh, bring about th um, a, a, a fundamental change in uh, personality, for example. And so um, there is an example in literature uh, where Scrooge went to bed, a curmudgeonly, mean-spirited old man, and then after three single sessions with three single session ghostly therapists, emerged completely different. That tends not to happen. So when both therapist and client hold realistic expectations about what can be achieved, then that is a favorable condition. So the client needs to understand what's on offer and gives informed consent. This is not something which is foisted on somebody. They get to choose whether they want to engage in this process or not. And time between help seeking and appointment is used well. When single session therapy is done by appointment, then when the appointment is made, then um, uh, the process of change is, 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 uh, uh, is underway because they are invited to engage in a process 
where they prepare themselves to get the most out of the session and feed back the information so that the therapist can prepare him or herself to help the person to get the most out of the session. What normally happens is that when you ring up for an appointment, you're given an appointment, you may be sent information about the service, but you're not really helped to engage in a process where time is used um, effectively. So this is another important condition. An organisational and administrative support is provided. So you may be, uh, uh, as a therapist, very gung-ho, rushed um, uh, back to set up a, a single session, part of a service within the agency in which you work, but unless you've got the support of the organisation and the administrative structure, then your, your enthusiasm will not, will not really bear fruit. So, um, on the other hand, unfavourable conditions is that there is a long gap between help sought and help provided. It makes no sense if there's going to be a long gap for single session therapy to be offered. Help is provided after certain conditions have been met. So um, if you're going to be, um, if you like, going for an assessment or where the person believes, as unfortunately increasingly cognitive behaviour therapists believe that you can't do therapy without a case formulation. Look, I've got nothing against case formulations. Perfect, but not for single session therapy. So if you believe that that uh, can only, a therapy can only be done on the basis of a case formulation, that's not a favourable condition. And case history, quite often when therapists do a case history, they gather a lot of information which is not used. Rather than do that, ask the client, what do I need to know about your history that will be crucial for me to know in order, in order for me to help you today? That's a much better question to ask. Time between an initial contact and help being provided is not used or not used well. As I say, nothing is, uh, you're not encouraged to do anything on the basis of having made um, a particular appointment. Now, blocks of sessions are offered. Again, I've got nothing against blocks of counselling sessions. In fact, if there is a good indication for a block of session to be offered, that's fine. I'm against the routine offering of blocks of sessions. How many of you, by the way, are counsellors in the audience? Just put your hand up. Okay. Now, what do you think is the most common number of sessions that is offered in a block? Six. I, it's six. <coughs> and then I asked a question, why six? And people say, because it's always been six. You can ask the question about why 50 minutes? Why not more or less? Why once a week? You know, and so, so, so this, uh, 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 this type of, of work does seem to challenge a number of uh, cherished ideas. So the more you have blocks, the more you have waiting lists, and the more and, and the greater number of sessions within the block, the longer the waiting list. So um, blocks of sessions routinely offered are um, really not the great uh, climate for single session therapy to thrive. And, uh, and there is a lack of organisational and, um, uh, and administrative support. 